Thank you so much again, Rebecca. And now I'd like to introduce Damika Baker Wilson, who is currently the Director of Development at the Community Foundation of Anne Arundel County and who helped make this film possible through her funding efforts. I'd like to make note of an amazing accomplishment. She was selected a few years back as one of uh, 36 museum professionals from around the globe to participate in the Getty Leadership Institute's Next Gen Executive Education Program, which is a blended learning experience for the museum's field of emerging top talent. And with what little time she does have left, she's a member of the Association of Fundraising Professionals, African American Development Officers, Women of Color in Philanthropy, and a Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Inc. member. Please welcome Damika. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I really appreciate the nice introduction. Um, I was actually texting my husband, who's on the on on right now, and letting him know that I forgot how beautiful the the film was. Um, while professionally, I am. Um, a member of the staff at the Community Foundation. Um, I'm here representing the Arboretum as uh, currently a board member, but also as the person who helped develop the initial project that ultimately turned into um, Rooted Wisdom. So um, thank you again for having me on the call and allowing me to represent the Arboretum um, here today. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Um, the... Hi, Soror. <laughs> so, um, this is the book that actually. Let's give a moment uh, for Damika. It looks like we're frozen at the moment. And we're just going to give her a moment to join. It looks like uh, we had a technical difficulty, which happened. So greatly appreciate everyone bearing with us for a moment. Now would be a great time if you do have any questions for when D'Amico returns. Please feel free to drop that in the chat so we can keep an eye on some of the questions that are coming in. I'm sorry. No I worries. I completely disconnected. <laughs> At the best time. Thank you. Look, we, we <laughs> can move forward. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'll go back to where I left off. Um, can everyone hear us? or hear me. Um, so the name of the Arboretum, I see someone popped the question into the chat. The name of the Arboretum is called Adkins Arboretum. It's in Ridgely, Maryland, which is in Caroline County um, on the Eastern shore. Um, so to kind of go back where I believe I left off, um, this book Bound for the Promised Land by Kate Clifford Larson actually sparked the initial interest um, in actually developing the project that eventually became um, Rooted Wisdom. And so there's a passage that actually initially stuck out to me when I developed the project. The project, the original name was Nature's Role in the Underground and the story of the Underground Railroad. And so this is the, the passage. Um, natural barriers were plentiful as well. Spiny sweet gumbers, thorny thicket, the sharp needles of marsh grass, 
and icy pass in the winter all took their toll on the feet and limbs of struggling runaways. And so I call them sweet gumballs, which I, I'd imagine most of you do. Um, sweet gumballs are um, the, little, the little things on your, on your screen, um, but they fall from sweet gum trees, which are native to Maryland and the South, kind of Southeast. And so when I initially read this passage in Kate's book, I immediately saw the area of the Arboretum that I would pass through when I walked into work. I would see the area that I grew up in, not far from the Arboretum. And so my background and my degree is in African-American studies. And so the wheels started to turn and we developed this, um, this project. Um, you can go to the next slide. So this is what we initially received funding for. Um, just a little, a little background. The Ar I think I mentioned before, the Arboretum was my very first nonprofit position and I wanted to be a grant writer. And so this was the very first grant proposal that I wrote. Um, it was a successful small grant. We were awarded a whopping $1,300 um, and that funded the production of this rack card as well as a web page on the Arboretum website. And that this is, these are the beginnings of this beautiful film that we just um, saw. So this was back in, I think, 2005, 2006. Um, and so fast forward more than 15 years later, um, it's evolved into such a beautiful, a beautiful project that has continued to kind of grow, grow legs and limbs and um, has continued to um, evolve. So we started with this and then over maybe the next year, myself and Jenna Tiernan, who's currently the executive director, um, and then was the programs person at the Arboretum, we met Tony Anthony Cohen, who is the president of the Monero Foundation. And um, the Monero Foundation is housed at Button Farm Living History Center in Germantown. And so we took a visit to Tony's um, organization, which is an, I don't know if anyone has ever experienced a living history, uh, ha has ever had a living history experience, but it's experiential, experiential learning at its, at its finest. And so it was very emotional. Um, it was um, it was amazing, but it helped us kick the project off into another level by incorporating uh, guided tours, um, lectures, um, and eventually an audio tour. And so Tony's, what I would call his like claim to fame amongst other things is that if anyone has seen Beloved, Sorry, Oprah Winfrey, it's a story of Margaret Garner, um, an enslaved woman who killed her daughter instead of allowing her to be enslaved again after they um, escaped to freedom. He was in many respects, a technical advisor for her on that role and prepared her for the role um, of Margaret Garner. So that's how we were first introduced to Tony. Um, and he's been very much a strong partner in the project as you see um, ever since. You can go to the next slide. So this was in about 2007, 2008, you fast forward to COVID. Um, and over that time, the Arboretum has now been named a stop along the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway. They're also a stop on the um, National Park Service uh, um, Underground, what is it? Underground Byway, I believe it's called. And so one of their products, the National Park Service is called the Ranger Roadshow. And so that, I believe this was developed during COVID as a way to continue to engage audiences as we were all kind of secluded and not leaving our homes. And so this was the third episode and they approached the Arboretum about discussing this project, um, Nature's Role in the Underground Railroad. So this is a QR code to the video. Um, to me, it's a really great companion piece um, to Nature's, um, to, rooted, to Rooted Wisdom. The video that you just saw, um, it's just myself and Tony um, kind of talking about the importance of the Arboretum and telling the story. Um, it's why it's uniquely positioned to tell the story um, and just how the project has, has grown over time. Um, so we filmed this in the winter of 2021 um, at the about the same time that the Arboretum Schoolhouse Farmhouse and Tony were starting to film the Rooted Wisdom film. Um, so the Rooted Wisdom film, it was filmed over a year so that the filmmakers could capture all four seasons at the Arboretum to really properly um, tell this story. Um, so then a year later in 2022, in March of 22, 2022, 
Rooted Wisdom premiered um, in March during the bicentennial of Harriet Tubman's birth um, in conjunction with the Tubman Visitor Center that's located in Church Creek. It was also their fifth anniversary um, as well. And so ever since then, um, the film has really been making its rounds, obviously stopping here um, for this great program. Um, and we can go on, go on to the next slide. I just wanted to amplify a few organizations. I wanted to start with Adkins Arboretum again, which is the organization that I'm representing here today. Um, it plants the initial seed of Rooted Wisdom um, and have, has continued to grow and um, help this project evolve from a rap card and a web page to guided tours, uh, lectures, audio tour, um, to now this film, um, this very, very beautiful film. And then also the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Historical Park in Church Creek, right outside of Cambridge. Um, both of them are stops along the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad byway. Um, and just a little story about that. When I was in college at University of Maryland, I took a research methodology class in the African-American history, um, history, African-American studies department. And I remember my um, professor talking about how she was so excited to come to the Eastern shore because she had seen signs of this historic byway and, you know, Frederick Douglass's hometown, but they were nothing but um, uh, markers on the highway. There was, there were no sites, there were no interpretive signage, there were, there were no, no nothing. And so I'm really proud that over the last 20 decades, 20 decades, 20 years since I graduated college that um, the Eastern Shore has really invested in the history of Black people um, in this country, the story of, of slavery in America. Um, it's a difficult story to tell, but one that is absolutely necessary for the world to hear um, and to really put in perspective what the enslaved people of, of our country had to go through at that time. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the sweet gumbers and just to kind of, you know, just to kind of put yourself in that place for a little bit. I'm sure everyone has probably stepped on a sweet gumball at some point in time with a shoe on, right? And like, so you know how hard, how, how much it hurts and, and, and how difficult it must be to walk over them. So just imagine not having any shoes or any coverings over your feet and you're stepping on these um, gumballs in the middle of the night and you need to keep quiet because they're dog they're dogs and men men with guns chasing you and so these are the types of um, emotions um, that I think naturally come to surface when you either do the film or visit one of these two sites um, that I think do a great job of immersing visitors into what the natural landscape would have felt like um, at the time um, the next slide I think there's one more Okay, so um, this is Button Farm. This is the site that myself, Jenna, and another staff member from the Arboretum visited a little over 15 years ago um, that I really feel like kicked the project into, into high speed um, and I think really helped us identify the levels in which the organization could take in telling this really unique story. Um, my background is in history and in, and in fundraising. Um, and so I always, gravitate towards opportunities to tell the story of our country at these cross sections where people don't naturally think those stories exist. So the story of, of rooted wisdom exists in, the, in this cross section of history and nature. And so hopefully through rooted wisdom, um, everyone has an opportunity to view this story of slavery in America and of the Underground Railroad through a lens through a lens that you would not have otherwise viewed the story. Um, and it really does a great job of meeting people where you are, because history is not everyone's thing, you know, and I think some people shy away from this really difficult story, um, part of the story of our country. And I think organizations like uh, Button Farm do a great job of kind of immersing us in those um, in those aspects of, Amer of, a, of the American story. Um, that's really all I have for my presentation. I just wanted to, um, there was a question that Sarah had asked me to address and I couldn't figure out how to kind of weave it in, but I wanted, I did want to want to bring it up. Um, she had asked, um, do you learn anything new from doing this process or watching the film or, or talking to the crew at all? Um, I didn't necessarily learn anything. It was a different level to what I knew, right? And it made me look at my natural environment 
very differently. I think many of us know the story of, you know, follow the drinking board, the importance of the North Star for freedom seekers. Um, but I never thought about the side of the tree that the moss grows on, how that could tell you what direction slaves, um, the enslaved um, knew to go in to seek freedom. And so hopefully Rooted Wisdom does the same thing for everyone else, um, changes your perspective, I mean, enhances your perspective. Um, it makes you look at your natural surroundings um, a little differently. Thank you so much, Damika. I greatly appreciate your time and all the knowledge that you have and everything you brought um, to help the film come to life so we could view it tonight. Um, I do want to give the floor over to our next presenters. And I'm just so honored to have Linda Harris and David Cole. I'd like to introduce them and everyone hand over your eyes and ears to this amazing couple who were just married, by the way, so please congratulate them, uh, who bring life, uh, bring to life some of these history's most important songs, as Damika just mentioned one, um, relating specifically to this topic. And so I'd like to um, welcome them to the floor and they will perform actually follow the drinking board for all of us to hear. Okay, can you see me now? Hello? Yes, I hear you okay. loud and clear. And, and see me. I must yes. regret, uh, David is not feeling well and he's not going to join me, but I will sing Follow the Drinking Gourd for you. But I wanna give you just a little history of, of who I am and, and how I came to be at the Harriet Tubman Museum and Education Center. And I, I, I really appreciated hearing, um, Dom, is it Damika? Uh, D'Amica's presentation. And I, I want to just mention that the Harriet Tubman Museum and Educational Center is actually 50 years old and it precedes the Underground Railroad State Park that we now have. And I, I am always, um, I always believe that our center should be talked about. Uh, there, there's a great deal of learning that goes on there, a great deal of passion um, that we put into telling the story of Harriet Tubman. And I had the wonderful, I have the wonderful opportunity now of being uh, the director of that museum. It's a small museum in downtown Cambridge on Ray Street. And we're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of each week. And uh, we have anywhere from 100 to 200 visitors in those three days. Uh, we're staffed by just two people, but we're quite passionate about the story of Harriet Tubman. And I, um, in 2020, uh, feeling as if my freedom had been taken away, uh, in part because of COVID and an inability to see family and friends, uh, the killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, the list goes on and on. I felt it necessary to restore my freedom. And I did that by coming to Cambridge and studying the Underground Railroad for several months, training, and then actually walking from Cambridge, Maryland to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and knocked on William Still's door, the, one of the great abolitionists uh, that was very instrumental in the movement of people and helping uh, enslaved people find freedom. That changed my life. And when I think about the lens, I now have a personal lens because I, I walked on the blood soaked roads of those enslaved people uh, many, many years ago uh, who sought freedom. So the drinking gourd, um, Certainly it was the shape of a, a gourd that was used for water, but more importantly, it is where the Big Dipper, if you, if you look at the constellation in the sky and see where the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper meet, there you will find the North Star, Polaris. And that is the, uh, the star that Harriet Tubman and all those seeking freedom followed up in the sky. So I'll start with singing the song, when the sun comes up and the first quail calls, Follow the drinking gourd, for the old man is waiting just to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd, follow the drinking gourd, follow the drinking gourd, for the old man is waiting just to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd, while the river bank makes a mighty good road, dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on. Follow the drinking gourd. 
follow the drinking gourd, follow the drinking gourd, for the old man is waiting just to carry you to freedom, follow the drinking gourd. Well, the river lies between two hills, follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side, follow the drinking gourd, follow the drinking gourd. Follow the drinking gourd, for the old man is waiting just to carry you to freedom. Follow the drinking gourd. When I walked uh, with seven other women in September of 2020, the code songs rang in my ear every step of the way. The Underground Railroad uh, was a system of people, locations, people, locations, and code songs. And the enslaved people used those codes to find their way to freedom. Coupled with their knowledge of the landscape, they were able to use those tools to find freedom. So it was quite, um, it's an amazing story. Slavery was a horrific condition, but people like Harriet Tubman took something from nothing to come become successful in finding freedom. It's truly an amazing American story. And it has shaped me and changed me in the most amazing ways. I coined the phrase, find the Harriet in you. You take one aspect of what she did, embrace it and it will change you forever. Harriet Tubman uh, was a conductor along the Underground Railroad. She made 13 trips back to this region to help 70 people find freedom. She helped 70 others uh, orchestrate a, a route, these clandestine routes to find freedom. She uh, fought in the Civil War. She was the only woman to fight in the Civil War. I went down to the Gullah Islands and walked the trail along the Combahee River to, uh, to engross myself in what it was like to be in the Civil War and be a woman fighting in the, in the war. Uh, she was a, a spy. She was a cook. She was a nurse. Just incredibly, an incredibly inspiring individual. She helped John Brown orchestrate the raid on Harper's Ferry. She helped Susan B. Anthony um, with the women's suffrage movement. She was hired to go and speak about equality for women, uh, uh, for equality for, for, for men and women, for people in general. None of us are free until we are all free. And then she goes to Auburn in her later in life and buys a house she befriends uh, Abraham uh, William Seward, who was the Secretary of State under Abraham Lincoln. He loans her the money to buy a house in Auburn, New York. And there she takes in the elderly and the poor. So her whole life was in service to others. She had enormous faith and simply believed that people should not be enslaved. So her story is an amazing story. It has inspired me. And at our museum, I lead walks. I will do a five mile walk or a 50 mile walk. And I take you along points on the Underground Railroad so that you can experience, you can experience what they may have experienced. Now we don't walk at night. We don't have dogs uh, chasing us, men on horseback, but you can still, if you close your eyes and open your heart, you can imagine what it would have been like and then applaud the courage and the resilience of the enslaved people. And I tell people when they come to our museum, I am exceedingly proud to be the descendant of such resilient, strong, purposeful people. And if we adopt those virtues in our lives now in 2023 and beyond, what an amazing place this would be. So we, we must uh, hold Harriet Tubman and the enslaved people who had the courage and made the huge sacrifices against all odds to go from slavery to freedom. Uh, it's the very fabric of this country and one that we must never forget. So that's pretty much my story. I can talk endlessly about Harriet Tubman. It's, as I said, it's given me uh, enormous purpose and pleasure and I volunteer at the museum. I live in the DC area. I bought a house here in, in Cambridge so that I can come here three days a week to volunteer. And I would love for you all to come uh, when, whenever you feel that you can and come experience our little museum uh, because there I believe the heart and soul of the story and the legacy of, of Harriet is. So that's pretty much my presentation. I can answer questions and I regret that David couldn't be here. We, he's a banjo player and we, um, 
In fact, we were at the African American Museum last night in DC singing these code songs. And we've, we've had the great fortune of going to various museums all over the country to perform. So it, it, it gives us great purpose and we really delight in being able to tell the great story of Harriet Tubman. Thank you so much, Linda. I, I will ask if it's, if it's possible. I know we're bumping up against time, um, but I do wanna allow a few questions that come through, um, but would you lend us your angelic voice to close us out after we take a couple questions to oh, end? Be happy to, be happy. Okay, <laughs> I was really looking forward to that. So thank you so much yeah. for still yeah. um, you know, performing on. So please, yeah, I have the chat open, but um, you know, please feel free to raise your hand, use that feature in the chat if you'd like. I, I'm sure we can take at least one or two. And then if, if we don't get to you, please rest assured if you put it in the chat, you know, I will get back to you in our post share recording. Um, so let's see. Let's yeah, see. Rebecca, could you stop sharing the slide so everybody can see each other? And I think there was one question that just came in. Um, uh, where did most of the passengers uh, going through the Underground Railroad um, through uh, Maryland East, Eastern Shore begin their journey? Well, should I or I, I? Well, they they would have left the various plantations and farms that they were enslaved on here on the Eastern Shore. So um, Harriet Tubman was enslaved on the Brodus Plantation. Uh, there was the Thompson's Plantation, the Patson Plantation, and they would have gone along a route, Route 16, that led uh, led north. So that that would have been been their route. Now their their routes were clandestine routes, and I'm not sure that we're absolutely certain which way they went. But we the route that I took, I knew that I was following north. So uh, they they would have started from there. And anyone else? I don't see any raised hands, but let me go through the chat and see if we have time for one more. Does the song refer to a particular area or geography, the one that you just performed? The drinking gourd, well, actually the first mention of the Underground Railroad was um, about 1830. And it, it it came to be uh, as a, a an enslaved man named Tish Daniels was running in Tennessee along the Ohio River. And as he was being chased, he jumped into the Ohio River and the term, his, the enslaver said, oh my God, he went underground. So that's where we believe the origins of the Underground Railroad began. And so that story is more particular to the region around the Ohio River following the drinking gourd. The enslaved people went as far uh, north as Canada, as far south as Mexico, as far west as Utah and those areas in between. But the Drinking Gourd song was, was through oral history, uh, a song that they knew to sing when they were about to escape. Wow, amazing. I don't wanna hold anyone longer, uh, but please feel free to leave at the moment. Um, Otherwise, I would love to give the floor to you again, Linda, um, just mm -hmm. to hear this beautiful song, to close this out. And, and um, thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I think I'll sing Motherless Child um, because that's what the enslaved people were. They, be, they were taken from their homeland uh, and became motherless children. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, a long way from home, a long way from home. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost done. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost done. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost done. A long way from home. A long way from home.
Thank you again. And just as a closing remark, you know, as a mother, I cannot uh, <laughs> but help to be moved to tears. I mean, just the thought. So thank you so much for sharing your beautiful voice and all of your knowledge. And thank you so much to Mika as well for joining us. We really appreciate being a part of this program. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for including me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And that is uh, the end of our program, ladies and gentlemen, we will be following up. Um, as I mentioned, there's some wonderful questions in there. So we'll be 